Okay, so today we're doing lesson 2.8. And don't forget that on Friday you have a quiz that will cover 2.1 through 2.9. Okay, so is this 2.8 part of the quiz? Yes. Yeah, okay. And your learning goal today is to be able to use... So is that any new part? Use standard algorithm to multiply numbers. Is that new for us today? No. Will that be any new learning? No. no. The second part, though, that says use estimation to check if the product is reasonable. Have we, have we already learned how to use estimation yes. to, round, to round numbers and then find an estimation for the product? Yes. So will that be new learning today? No. no. So what's new today? No. Nothing really except that we're combining two different skills that we've already learned. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Let's talk about the problem of the day first. So, the directions say to estimate the product first. I had, I forget who, but during a, a conference I was talking to someone and they were saying, so why would we ever estimate if we can just do, if I know how to do the actual math problem and I know how to find it? What's, what's the point of estimating? Talk at your table groups. Borrowing Andrew's words, he was saying, hey guys, estimating helps you figure out the range of where your answer should be. So after you do the actual calculations, if it's in the range, you're good to go. If it's not in the range, you have to think, er, 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 error, 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 there's something wrong, and then you, you know that you have to go find your mistake. So let's first do estimation. Remind me again, what are these parts of the multiplication problem called? Factors. factors. So we can estimate the product by rounding the factors. So we can say 662 is pretty close to what number that's easier to work with? Everyone? 650. 650, or even easier, how about 700? Okay, and then 372 is pretty close to what number? 400. 400. So we can estimate that 662 times 372 is close to 700 times 400. Will the actual number be less or more? Less. Because each of these factors, we round it up. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. So what's 7 times 4? 28. 28. And then how many multiples of 10 do we have to add? Two, three, four. Good. One, two, three, four. So our actual answer should be somewhere in the range of 280,000, but it should it be more or less? less. Good, because do you guys see how we increase 662 to 700 and 372 to 400? So our product of 280,000 is going to be bigger than our actual pro product. Do you see that? Okay, so that means if we get an answer like um, 1,452, do you think we're in the right range? No. no. Or if we get 345 billion... No. Are we in the right range? No. no. So estimating helps us find out how reasonable our actual answer is. Okay, so if we're somewhere in this range, then we know that it's quite reasonable. Okay, so now that you've written down the actual problem and your estimate, let's do the actual multiplication using the standard algorithm. So we'll write 662 times 372. Okay. The first multiplication problem we're really going to do is 662 times 2, yes? Okay. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 6 is 12. I'm going to write the 2, but I'm going to regroup the 1. 2 times 6, again, is 12, plus 1 is 13. So therefore, 662 times 2 is 1,324, yes? Yes. Okay. Moving on, the next number I'm really going to be multiplying is 662 times... 70. 70, yeah. So I'm going to write a placeholder zero here to show that now I'm working with the tens. Now I'm ready to multiply again. Two, or sorry, seven times two is 14, so I'm going to write the four, but I'm going to regroup the one. Six times seven is 42, right guys? Yeah. Plus one would be 43, so I'm going to write the three and regroup the four. Again, seven times six is still 42, but this time I'm adding four more, so I have 46. Good. That's another partial product. Next, I'm, I have this 3 left, but it's really what value? 300. 300 times 662. So I have to add two placeholder zeros now to show that I'm working in the hundreds. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6. Don't need to regroup anything. 3 times 6 is 18, so I'm going to write the 8 and regroup the 1. 3 times 6 is still 18, but I have to add 1, so I have 19. Well, remember that all these are partial products, so in order to find the whole product, I need to add them up. Some of you are making silly mistakes because when you write these partial products, you're not lining up the place values very carefully. Okay, you have to imagine that there's a place value chart because if you don't, could you mess up your addition? Yeah. Okay, and some of you are. 
How many ones do I have all together? Four. How many tens? Six. How many hundreds? Twelve. Okay, so I'm going to write two, and then one of them will become a thousand. How many thousands do I have? Sixteen. Good, so I'm going to write six of them. One of them will become a ten thousand. How many ten thousands do I have? Fourteen. So I'm going to write four of them, and one of them will become a hundred thousand? Two. Oops, sorry, two. Okay, so let's see. Our, our product, I'm going to rewrite it over here. I have 246,264. Is it in the range of our estimate? Yeah. And in fact, is it less than our estimate? Yeah. And did we want it to be less than our estimate? Yeah. So we can feel pretty good about our answer. If I wanted to feel even better, I could solve it a second way. What could be a second way I could do this problem? Area model. Area model, very good. Okay, in your notebook, you're going to write down what the question's asking and the important information. It says, a club had some money to purchase new chairs. After buying 355 chairs at $199 each, there was still $1,068 remaining. How much money did the club have at first? Okay, see if you can write down number, step one, what the question's asking. Okay, Andrew, what's the question asking? Okay, so this is a tricky problem. I'm going to tell you that right now. But it's not tricky if you act it out in your head. We had some amount of money, and we bought chairs. After we bought the chairs, we still had some money left. Did we use up all our money buying the chairs? No. no. Okay. What important information do we need to know in order to figure out how much money did the club have at first? Gia? Um, you need to know that there was 355 chairs. Okay. Okay. Good. So let's draw a tape diagram to help us figure out what happened here. Okay. So if this is all the money that the club had at first, do we know how much that is? No. No, that's what we're trying to figure out, right? So you're going to draw a big question mark to show that that's what we're trying to figure out. Now, did they spend all of their money on the chairs? No. So they spent some money on chairs. And how much money, how can we find out how much money they spent on chairs? Well, we know they bought 355 chairs, and they each cost $199. So if I multiply 355 times 199, will that be how much they spent on chairs? Okay. And after they bought the chairs, how much money did they have left? $1,068. So this amount here is what they had left after they bought the chairs, yes? So if we find out how much they spent on chairs and add that to the amount they had left, will that tell us how much they had at first? Good. Let's do that. But before we do that, let's use estimation to find out about how much they spent on chairs. So 355 is pretty close to what number? Okay, let's do 350. And 199 is pretty close to what number? 200. So we can estimate that. What's 35 times 2? 70. And then we have to add one, two, three more zeros. So we can estimate that they spent about $70,000 on chairs, right? Yep. Okay, let's find out exactly how much they spent on chairs. Go ahead and use the standard algorithm to multiply 355 times 199. Wait a second, is there something we could do that's easier than doing 355 times 199? Think about the mental strategies we've learned that could make it a lot easier than doing 355 minus 199. What? I mean times. times. sorry. How many 355s do we have? Uh, 199. Is this the same thing as 199 355s? Yeah. What's pretty close to 199 of something? 200. So is this the same thing as 200 355s minus 1 355? Would you rather do 200 times 355 or no, 199 times 300? Okay, Andrew, you do 199 times 355. The rest of us will do it the other way, and we'll see if we get the same answer. Because if we get the same answer doing it two different ways, does that mean we were right? Yeah. Okay, so how can I write 200, 355? It would be 200 times what? 355. Okay, so let's do that. We can do 200 times 355, and then I have to take away how many of them? One, One times 355. Okay, so what's two 
times 355. Well, let's do that using the standard algorithm. 355 times 2. What's 2 times 5? 10. What's 2 times 5? Plus 1. Okay. What's 2 times 3? Plus 1. So it's 200 times 355, 710? No, I have to add two zeros. Good. So 710, and I add two more multiples of 10. So it's 71,000. And then I have to subtract 1 times 355, which is? 355. Okay. So using standard algorithm, I can subtract 7,000 or 71,000 minus 355. Okay, I need to do some regrouping. So 10 minus 5 is 5, 4, 6, 0. Did you guys get 70,645? Yeah. Okay. Andrew, is that what you got too? Oh, you're not done yet. So which way is faster? Which way, is, which way makes more sense logically? This way, right? Do you see how Andrew used the standard algorithm? There's nothing wrong with that, but do you see how using this mental strategy of taking 200, 355s, and we take away one of them, is faster than using the standard algorithm? Yeah. Good. Andrew, did you get the same answer? Yeah. Good. So is our final answer that they had $70,645? No. Let's go back. We think we're done. Let's read what the question is asking. How much money did they have at first? Did they have this much money at first? Yeah. No. The, what does this amount represent? The money, the money that they spent on? Chairs. Chairs. But if they still had this much left over, what do we have to do? We have to add that amount. Okay, so how many ones do we have all together? 13. So we're going to write the 3 and regroup the 1. Now how many 10s do we have all together? 11. So I'm going to write the 1 and regroup the 1. How many 100s do we have all together? How many 10s, I mean 1,000s do we have all together? And how many 10,000s? So how much money did they have all together? $71,713. And that is our answer right there. Okay? So do you see how if you draw a tape diagram, how you, if you use estimation, how if you use the mental strategies we've learned, it helps you get the correct answer? So this problem right here took everything we've learned this unit, huh? It took tape diagrams into consideration. It took